Rain pours from the sky down onto the city streets. In a back alley, awash with gutter water mixing with discarded trash, the mutant time traveler, Cable, lies in a pool of his own blood. Stand up or you're a dead man, Cable! Hollers a robotic voice as a glowing artificial intelligence hefts a huge syringe to Cable's dying body. I'm injecting as much adrenaline as I dare into your system. Cable yells in pain as his heart suddenly thumps back to life. Moments ago, the mutant was as good as dead. His AI assistant has given him a final chance, but his attacker still hunts in the night unseen. Where is he, Bill? The X-Men asks as he weakly attempts to lift himself up off the ground, fear wavering in the back of his voice. But his right-hand robot, Bell, doesn't know where the assassin could be. Frantically, she scans the surrounding area until a dark, uncaring voice rumbles out from the shadows. Right here, Nate. Deadpool says as he steps out of the shadows. Wade betrays his position from the darkness, revving up the motor on a grizzled chainsaw for all to hear. Menacingly and without even a hint of emotion, the mercenary Deadpool walks slowly closer to the downed Cable, a man who he once called his best friend. The two mutant warriors leap at one another, both understanding that even a single instant of weakness could spell certain doom. Cable is wounded, blood still pouring from his open wounds. Deadpool pulls back his chainsaw while Cable flexes his metal arm. The weapons meet in between the two combatants with a clash of sparks. I'm here to kill you! Deadpool screams as he tries to gore his old friend. But Cable gets the best of Wade, knocking the chainsaw from his hands and cracking his metal fist across Deadpool's chin. As Deadpool crashes to the ground, Cable, lifting his arm to the air with a flash of light, brings in backup. Bell, Cable orders. Call for Trista. With a loud pop, seconds later, Cable holds in his hands a gargantuan three-gauged cannon. Deadpool has only a moment of time to dive out of the way as Nathan Summers levels his giant firearm at Wade. Without even so much as a warning, Cable pulls the trigger. The weapon's lasers surround Deadpool in a condensed beam of pure crackling energy. This feels like anime! Deadpool yells as the energy begins to channel around him. And I hate anime! Suddenly, the weapon humming to life in Cable's hands. Deadpool doubles over in pain as the beam tears through him and locks his form in a bubble of pure electricity. Deadpool screams in torment as the energy fills him with crackling lightning. I don't know what went wrong with Deadpool. Cable says as he turns to leave Wade, trapped in the prison of pain. As Nathan goes to retreat, he doubles over in pain and holds his side, trying to stem the bleeding. I suggest putting some distance between you and Deadpool until we can triage, Belle offers as she scans his brutally assaulted body. Even without internal scans, it's clear that Cable is in dire need of medical attention. Turning tail, Cable escapes into the night, trying to put as much distance between him and his would-be assassin as possible. Cable's containment field continues to keep Deadpool locked in an excruciating position as the mutant leader makes his getaway. Ah! Wade cries, This is the most metal thing that's ever happened to me! Finally, mercifully, the bubble pops. Deadpool slumps to the floor, every fiber of his body still screaming as he lands. Damn it, I just want this over. Deadpool complains as he stands, the raindrops steaming as they fall onto his irradiated back. Where'd Road Rage Brand Walsh go? Wade demands as he sprints into the city, following the meager trail of blood left in Cable's wake. Somebody talk! He yells frantically as he points his gun towards the innocents on the street. Which way did the dude with the metal arm go? The terrified civilians only shrug, none having seen Cable as he left. One horrified newspaper vendor goes to his phone as Deadpool levels his guns at innocents. Yeah, man, I'm sure it's Deadpool. Send the cops! The man pleads, but Deadpool hears his calls for help. Turning slowly towards the man, Deadpool lights up his newspaper stand with a hail of bullets. The vendor dives for cover, narrowly escaping Deadpool's fury with his life. 
Wade only stops firing when he hears the vendor tell the emergency line that it was in fact the Punisher terrorizing innocents on the street. Satisfied that his tracks have been covered, Deadpool dashes off into the night to finish off his prey once and for all. As he desperately searches the streets of the city for any sign of Cable, Deadpool's mind begins to wander. He thinks back on how he found himself hunting down one of his oldest friends in the first place. A time-traveling doppelganger of Cable has me over a barrel. I owe him. Deadpool reminds himself his blackmailer's name? Strife. A longtime headache of the X-Men and all around bad news. A villain that also happens to be an evil clone of, you guessed it, Cable. He gives me names and I turn those names into corpses. Deadpool's shoulders lower as he prepares for what he must do next. With deadly purpose, Wade walks into the closest hospital and begins prowling the emergency room. Deadpool's mere presence, combined with the high-power firearms he brandishes, sends patients and doctors alike running for their lives. As DP stalks the hospital, his mind once again begins to wander. The first name Strife gave me was Cable. I thought about not going through with it, but I push those thoughts away for now and focus on the target. Forced to once again become the deadly, blood-soaked mercenary he had tried so hard to put behind him, Deadpool's eyes sink into his skull as he promises himself this time he'll finish his target for good. Just then, a passing shadow behind a hospital curtain sends Deadpool into a frenzy. Wade fires wildly into the room, but Wade's bullets find and cripple an on-duty doctor rather than his metal-armed mark. Ah, well, the good news is at least you're already at the emergency room, Wade jokes meagerly. But at that moment, a canister comes hurtling out of nowhere and collides solidly with Deadpool's skull. Idiot. Cable reprimands Wade. How many will have to pay the ultimate price for getting close to you? Wrapped up in hospital curtains, Deadpool goes careening into a nearby room, screaming and howling as he struggles to find his footing. Cable, having got the jump on his pursuer this time, follows after. Next, Nathan lays into Deadpool with his shoulder, determined not to give the regenerating degenerates any breathing room. I never thought I'd say this. Cable starts as he attempts to choke Wade out, pounding his metal fist into him for good measure. But talk, damn it! Tell me why! As Cable desperately tries to get through to Deadpool, all that the Merc with the Mouth can see are visions of his kidnapped child, Eleanor. Sick and dying, Strife was Deadpool's only chance to find a cure for his daughter, and Strife used that leverage to blackmail Wade into becoming his hired gun. Anger at himself, his predicaments, and his failure as a father sent Deadpool deeper into his self-hating spiral. I don't owe you anything! Deadpool yells out even as his head is being bashed in. The image of his daughter only adding fuel to DP's fiery rage. Fine, Cable retorts. I don't give a damn anyway. As Cable hurls Deadpool through a nearby wall, he bellows. Everyone I know has a plan to permanently kill you, and you're gonna find out what mine is. Finally landing on his feet, Deadpool unsheathes his katana and looks straight at Cable. I'm honestly wishing you the best in that endeavor. Cable lunges and Deadpool crashes through the hospital wall into an MRI room. Without hesitation, Cable barks orders to his AI. Bell, get ready to jump. But just before Cable can escape his clutches once more, Deadpool darts to the wall and flips on the giant magnet in the middle of the room. Cable's metal arm is magnetized to the MRI machine as it powers up, and Wade solemnly lifts his katana over his head. Hack into the machine and turn the magnet off. Cable pleads with Bell, but Deadpool knows he has his prey right where he wants him. Again and again, Deadpool's swords come down on Cable's shoulder, trying to slice through the carbon fiber shoulder blade. Though even as Wade feels his sword cut into his old friend's arm little by little, Deadpool can't bring himself to open his eyes as his sword does its wicked work. As Deadpool chops into Cable's prosthetic, the magnetized mutant yells, Bell, jump! But it's too late. Deadpool's blade splits Cable's arm from his chest right at the shoulder, sending his old friend sputtering with blood to the floor. Maniac, Cable whispers, barely able to draw breath. Deadpool only sighs. <sighs> yep, 
Sorry, Nate. Deadpool winds back and drives the edge of his sword with sickening accuracy towards Nathan Summer's neck. I don't have a choice. But just as his blade is about to decapitate his target, the mercenary's muscles stop dead midair. What? Deadpool utters, confounded. What the hell? Why can't I move? Cable responds calmly. It's a tachyon field, dumbass, and not one of mine. Then, from out of a nearby portal, strangely clad soldiers march out into the hospital room. This is Time Variance Officer Salcedo. We have secured the prisoner, one of the soldiers announced. Indeed, the Time Variance Authority, better known as the TVA, had arrived. Time cops, Deadpool said aloud, incredulous. As his attacker stood, helpless above him, Cable was initially relieved to see the TVA. Thanks for the assist, officers, he told them as they were filed into the room. Not sure what you want with him, but I actually think Deadpool was about to kill me. The time cops, though, did not march towards Wade. They approached Cable himself, quickly restraining him and putting the man in cuffs. We're not here for Wade, they told him. We're here for you, Cable. Then, reading off of his warrant, the officer continued, Subject Nathan Summers, aka Cable, aka Strife, is in custody. Cable desperately argued with the officers as he was being carried away, trying to explain that Strife was simply his evil clone from the future, but the TVA was hearing none of it. The moment that the officers escorted Cable through the portal, Deadpool was released from his forced stasis. He toppled to the ground, his sword clattering to the floor beside him. Wade sat up against the wall. His target vanished into the time stream with no shred of a trace left behind. The phone on the wall began ringing. The voice on the other end sounded much like Cable's, but darker and more steeled. I ask you to kill Cable, and suddenly the TVA show up and swipe him out from under you. That is some rotten luck, but I think you're losing your edge, Deadpool. Wade had some choice words for Strife, but the image of his daughter kept him in check as he lifted himself from the ground. How am I supposed to kill Cable when he's not even in this year anymore? Deadpool asked, exasperated and furious. You have everything you need right there, the voice said shortly and then abruptly hung up. Deadpool turned slowly towards Cable's metallic arm, but Bell stood waiting as Wade advanced. I'm not helping you, she told him, but Deadpool wasn't counting on her help in the first place. Instead, he attached a device to Cable's leftover arm, which began downloading itself into the mainframe instantly. I just attached a logic bomb the Avengers cooked up in case Ultron returns, Wade said aloud to Bell. It allows me to fight an artificial intelligence like yourself on your turf. As he spoke, with an almost eerie calmness, Deadpool casually stuck his sword through the back of a nearby wall and carefully placed the edge under his armpit. This is gonna suck, he said as he braced himself for the nasty work that was to come. In one horrible motion, Deadpool pulled down hard on his own shoulder, driving the edge of his sword up and through his own bicep. In a stoic sacrifice to keep chasing his target, Deadpool succeeded in severing his own arm from his body with one clean, gruesome slice. Blood gushed from the wound across the hospital floor as his discarded arm fell to the ground. Deadpool barely managed to hold his tongue and keep from screaming as the pain overwhelmed him while he delimbed himself. You're despicable, Deadpool, Bell told him, looking on in horror as a strange new AI snuck up behind her. Deadpool's virus had taken hold of Cable's arm, and once the AI was ready to pounce, Wade didn't hesitate to give his first command. Directive, remove all security features from Cable's hardware and his artificial intelligence. DP ordered his new AI assistance as he snapped Cable's metal arm in place into his own empty shoulder socket. Without warning, Bell was struck on the back of the head and fell unconscious to the artificial floor. A small, gremlin-like caricature of Deadpool stood over Bell, grimacing up at his master. Within minutes, Deadpool had not only removed Bell's security systems, but reinstated her with his own artificial intelligence, giving him complete and unmitigated control over the arm. On it, boss, artificial DP said, as it tied Bell up to keep her from reinstating her will over the arm. I can't destroy the previous operating system, but I've trapped it in a partition, it told its master, but Deadpool wasn't listening. Whatever, Wade told his virus, just boot up the time machine. 
Deadpool's eyes were cold and heartless as he prepared to jump through the time streams in search of his prey. While Cable was one of Wade's oldest and dearest friends, this new version of Deadpool had put all emotions aside in order to keep his daughter safe. With his old friend's arm attached and ready for his commands, Deadpool relayed his mission statement to himself. I gotta cut Cable's heart out. And if you want more despicable me mercenary action before we get to that, check out Deadpool fighting two Spider-Men at once.